man. Um, it's a good day. It's a good day because this is the Lord's day, it's the day that he's made. And so it's a good day. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thank God for his day. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, thank God for everyone that's coming, that's come on today and those that are on their way. Uh, we appreciate your, your faithfulness and diligence as unto the Lord. Uh, thank God for you and thank God for God. Um, if we can check the audio just when the live comes on, uh, I was doing some things yesterday with our, it's not on? Okay. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, if we can just check the audio, I was recording a video last night for our pastors. And so um, our apostles celebrating 38 years uh, in the gospel, preaching the gospel. And so I um, just made a video for him. And so I messed with some audio stuff back there. And so I want to make sure that everything is still good. All right. Um, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer and then we're going to dive into tonight's word upon today. Um, also, I uh, want to ask if there's any prayer request. If there's any prayer requests, um, feel free to make those known, whether they're spoken prayer requests or unspoken. Yes, ma'am. Praise God. He hasn't been able to leave all the paperwork and all that, mm -hmm. and he is finally they let us know on Monday the 26th, uh, he is to be picked up at 8 o'clock in Huntsville. But between now and for yesterday, the day before yesterday, my niece, her daughter, was notified that he's in the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, Galveston Hospital. That's where they send the Okay. So okay. I just um, trust in the Lord that he's doing fine. Yeah. He will still come out and release to him. Amen. 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 I would like to know how he's doing, if he's serious or not serious. Yes. <laughs> okay. I ask the Lord to help Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Uh, we'll definitely uh, we'll be lifting you up before the Lord and that situation up before the Lord in prayer uh, for the God's divine will, that his guidance, uh, that uh, that God will intervene yes. and, and he could be one thing I love about God he's omnipresent he's everywhere at once and so uh, that the same God that's in Lockhart right now our God our creator is in Galveston yes. and is right there and he knows exactly what's going on so uh, we serve a faithful God he's a guy a, guy, a healer and a guy that, that gives peace even when we can't be there our prayers can be there and our prayers are sent to heaven and so we're going to lift that up before the Lord here momentarily. So thank you for sharing that. And we'll continue to uh, be praying for that. I need to put that on um, our prayer wall at home so we can continue to pray for that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, I already told you, but just keep my uh, co-worker's daughter lifted up in prayer. Yes. Um, and she is currently being hospitalized as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So co-worker's daughter, um, is it all right to say her name or just... Okay, Soraya, uh, we're going to lift her up in prayer as well um, as she's in the hospital as well. So uh, a lot to be praying about, praying for, and so we'll keep those uh, before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. If there's nothing else, uh, we're going to uh, go before the Lord in prayer uh, as we open up and step into God's word, but we wanted to make sure that we touch on the prayer requests that were on people's hearts right now so we can be a body together and, and shoulder that load with uh, that weight of, of, of sometimes anxiety and being worried and a little bit of stress as well that we can come together as a body and petition heaven in the name of Jesus. So let us pray. Uh, and if you have any prayer requests, if you're watching online, if you have any prayer requests, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, as well. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for just your will being done on tonight. God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and we enter into your courts with praise. Father, we're so very grateful that we get another chance and opportunity to give you glory and honor and praise, Father God. Lord, if we've done anything that's been offensive in your sight, God, please forgive us. Please forgive us from any sin of omission that we omitted to do, things we knew were wrong, but um, and we just didn't know in sins of commission, God, things that we committed and knowingly we did. So things that we didn't know we were doing or things we knew we were doing wrong, please forgive us, God. 
God, we ask that you will have your way in us, with us, and through us, and even in this service as we break bread, as we study the word of God on this Wednesday night, Father, Bible study. Open our eyes, open our understanding so we can continue to do your word. Help us be hearers of your word and do your word, Father God, as we study to show ourselves approved. As we are not just believers and Christians, we're followers of you and we're disciples of God. So we're disciplining our life after you father so we ask that you would have your way in this time and everyone that's here and those that are coming in the name of jesus now god there have been some that have have shared their petitions and their prayer requests request on tonight god you have heard those prayer requests and you knew the requests before they even uttered those requests father so we ask that you would have your way that you would have your way god in the hospital even now in galveston father as you would have your way and mother adela's brother father god we thank you that he is the healed of the lord father god there's not a report on this side exactly what's going on but father you know exactly what is going on in that hospital room father god so we dispatch minister angels even now to flood the room father in the name of jesus oh god we thank you for your peace and your healing god healing in the name of jesus god we think that his body is healed whole and free of pain father god in the name of jesus so god we speak to the organs and the kidneys father god we think that the kidneys are functioning where they should be called to function in the name of jesus god we speak his, to his organs god and we command them god to function as you called them god we come against any organ failure in the name of jesus oh god and we thank you god that you are turning things around because you are a uh, 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 God, oh God, and because his sister has petitioned you, Father God, to intervene. So we thank you, God, for healing. We thank you, God, for the paperwork even going through on his, his release upon next week, Father God. We thank you for no uh, delay. God, we thank you for everything being in place, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for peace for the mother, Mother Adele. We thank you for peace for the daughter, her niece, Father God. We thank you for peace, God, for all the family members who are concerned about this man of God. So have your way in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your will being done in that situation. We call your name and give you the glory and the honor and the praise, Father, in Jesus' name. God, we even thank you for the young lady who's in the hospital even now, Soraya, Father God, in Dale's Children's Hospital, Father. God, you know what's going on, Father God, and you know the God the need, what's, what's ailing in her body. God, we thank you that you were wounded for her transgressions and bruised for her iniquities. The chastisement of your peace is upon her, and by, uh, by your stripes she's healed in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for healing uh, from the top of her head to the soles of her, of her feet, Father. We thank you, for, Father, for giving her mother and grandmother peace, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that their trust is, is, is in you as they reached out to prayer warriors and say, hey, pray for my daughter. Pray for Soraya, God. So we lift up Soraya to you. God, we thank you for giving Soraya peace in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you we come against fear and anxiety for her father. God, we think that she's trusting in you. God, that you're giving her peace with the doctors and the the uh, the, the nurses and the hospital staff there, Father. We thank you, God, that you would get the glory in that situation in the name of Jesus. God, the unspoken prayer request that we have even now, Father God, we thank you, God, for ministering. God, thank you for moving, God. We thank you for even blessing the children that have started school in this district this week, Father. We thank you for your will being done. God, we think that you are God and we are not. God, we can cast our cares upon you. We can cast our weights upon you, God. We can cast uh, the things that we're going through and look to you, God. We think that you are on the throne. And you sit high, you look low. And God, the things that come in our life do not stress you out, Father. So we thank you, God, that we can come to you, God, and we can, uh, for you are our strong tower. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is a good God. I'm reminded of... Um, Mother uh, Wilson is joining. Good to see you, Mother Wilson, all the way in Kalamazoo. We thank God for you and the, for God's blessing. Continue to have his way in your life. Amen. God is a, a mighty God. And thanking God for uh, Mother Niels uh, in Atlanta. She recently lost uh, her, her brother and continue to pray for that family in the name of Jesus. And Mother Bryant as well, continue to lift her up before the Lord in prayer. Um, I know Mother Wilson was talking about when I spoke to her this week, there was a funeral that happened and uh, a, a cousin had passed and we're continuing to pray for that bereaved family as well in the name of Jesus. All right. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Praise God. Well, it's a Wednesday on this uh, Wednesday. Uh, we're so glad to be before you. Uh, last week we had the work and God brought us there and back and so we thank God for his faithfulness tonight we're going to be talking about uh, resisting temptation that's the topic for tonight resisting temptation um, and so we'll be dealing with that topic tonight I'm reminded that we talked about four R's as I was looking through my notes uh, earlier this year we talked about four R's one was resist Remember, we talked about resist. Can you remember the another R that we happened to talk about? Remember, we, uh, if you recall, we talked about resist. 
And then there was another one. Rebuke. Uh-huh. Renounce. Renounce. And repent. Exactly. Repent. Resist. Re renounce. Rebuke. Repent of your sin. Of your wrongdoing. Amen. Sin is not a good thing. We were born, uh, born into, sh into sin, shaping into iniquity. Uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 and 23 says that. And so we repent of our sin. Uh, we renounce our sins and things that we've done. And so close those doors that we open or renounce whatever it was in the name of Jesus. Especially as it comes back to our mind. There was one thing I was remembering here in the last couple of weeks. I was like, ooh. God, I'm so, please forgive me for doing that. Like I repented, but it just came up. So, Lord, I want to renounce that. I'm sorry. It just kind of bubbled up. And this was a long time ago, but I thought about it. And so continue to clean ourselves, right, to renounce those things, to rebuke the enemy, rebuke the devil uh, and resist the devil. He will flee. So tonight we're talking about that. As I was going to my notes, um, there were some good notes. There were some good notes that we, we looked at, uh, on. And so I if I meant to print a copy, uh, you weren't able to. OK. It didn't make it. Oh, because it's not plugged in. So, yeah, I, I unplugged it before I came out because I had to plug something else in. So if you want to try it again, when you get a moment just to unplug it, it might catch up to what you sent in the cloud. Uh, thank you. So um, before you leave, if you want to kind of re reflect on those notes about resist, rebuke, uh, renounce and um, and repent, um, you can get a copy of those notes if you wish. Uh, if not, we'll just continue to flow. Amen. All right. So uh, how was everyone's week? Was it all right? Was it good so far? I pray that's been well. Um, busy, busy, busy. Busy, busy. Amen. So we're talking about resisting temptation. And so even as we're living in the last days, um, let me ask you this question. Who was the first family that's a good way to put it. The first family who was tempted in the Bible. Who was the first family who was tempted in the Bible? Who's that? Adam and Eve. Correct. Adam and Eve. Very good. Adam and Eve. Adam was tempted in the um, Eve was tempted in the garden. Uh, who tempted Eve? The snake. The Satan. The devil. Tempted Eve. Right. He tempted Eve in the garden. The serpent. And how did he tempt Eve? What was the fruit that he said? Well, the, what was the fruit? The fruit of what? what? What tree was it from? Do you remember? Uh, right, the apple, the good, the tree, the fruit of good and evil. Now, in our modern day, uh, we depict it as an apple. It wasn't necessarily an apple, but that's what the fruit, because that's we don't know exactly what fruit it was. So that's the symbol we give it. But she ate other fruit that she wasn't supposed to eat of, right? And she was tempted. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye and the pride of life. Um, Shekinah, if you can't get it done, that's okay. Um, if you can't get it done, we'll just keep flowing. So she was tempted uh, uh, with those three things. And did she successfully resist temptation? No. Now, we don't know how many times he came to her, right? But at some point, she didn't resist temptation. We're, I'm, we're assuming it was the first time. And she, uh, she didn't successfully pass the temptation. Now, let me ask you this question. Raise your hand if you've ever been tempted to do something. <laughs> right? All of our hands should be given up. Now, let me ask you this question. Raise your hand if you've been tempted to do something since, since you've been a believer and have been walking with Christ, if you've been tempted to do something. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Yes, hands down. Hands down. So temptation. Temptation is, it, it comes to, uh, to all of us, right? We can all be tempted by something. What are some things, and you can kind of respond in the chat if you want to as well, for those that are watching. What are some things that you can be tempted with? Shekinah, if you can take us to Google Slides, the first one. Candy. Candy. I want candy. So candy can be a temptation. As we look at temptations, not the, not the temptations of the singing group, right? Ooh, I bet you wondered how I knew. All right, candy. All right. Uh, by the, by the way, that song was I Heard It Through the Grapevine. For some of y'all, you may not, you know, that might be, actually be honest, that's before my time too. But uh, I remember hearing it. Uh, but candy, temptation. What other temptations may, uh, now you don't have to tell on yourself fully, but what other temptations may have you or someone else uh, been tempted, tempted with? 
Money, 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 money. Money, candy, okay. Anything else? Huh? Drugs, yes. Food and more food, yes. Sexual desire. Anything else? Power. Power. To lie. Anything else? That's a good list. To go off on some on folks. Give somebody a piece of your mind. And to go off on somebody. Go off. To act unseemly or out of character. Okay, and we can go on and on. Um, we'll keep going on. All right, so we have on our slide here today resisting temptation. And um, just want to talk about some of the pictures we, that were chosen for this first slide. Uh, resisting. Name one thing that you see on here, and let's talk about it real quick. Uh, resisting. You, you can share it for those at home as well. Um, what's a picture that you see? A dog. You immediately saw that one, huh? A dog. In this picture, this dog is resisting. How, how do you know? How do you know the dog is resisting? He's pulling back. Right, he's pulling back, and you can tell, like, he's, as Sister Birdie said, his position. I love that word. His position, his posture uh, tells us that he's resisting, and by that, he's pulling back. He's kind of dead weight. You know, I'm not going. Just that dead, dead weight. You gonna make, you gonna have to work, use your muscles if you want to pull me. All right. Brother Troy also added temptation to alcohol. Yes, sir. Thank you for uh, for sharing that, uh, Pastor Mary. Brother Troy, thank you, sir. Alcohol. Now, alcohol was the word I think in fourth grade that I got out of I, my, my spelling bee. I misspelled alcohol in the citywide spelling bee, and so I make sure I spell it right now. But alcohol, alcohol, yes, is a temptation, a big temptation. And we're going to be talking about how to resist temptation. Okay? Um, how to resist temptation. Resisting temptation. So what other, what other pictures do you see up here? Anybody? Cigarettes. Cigarettes can be a big temptation. Why, uh, why is cigarettes a temptation? Because they're addictive. They're addictive, right? And the, the, the substance that's in the cigarettes that's addictive is nicotine. When you ingest it and put it in your body, your body craves it more. So it's physically, your body is physically saying, I want to do this. But yet your mind may be saying, I don't want to do this. But your body is craving it, right? And that's with a lot of other drugs as well, alcohol and, and drugs. Your body is saying, I want it because you've introduced something, a foreign substance that should not be in your body. You introduced it into your body. Your body's like, whoa, what's going on? And we have uh, uh, signals going on. And then now your body say, okay, now that I've adjusted, give me more, right? So... Another thing that's on this, uh, this slide. Social media. Social media is on there, right? Social media or just being addicted to your phone at a, a period, right? It could be, be playing games or listening to music or things like that. Social media, the phone is a little computer in our hand nowadays. That can be a temptation. Can be a big temptation. Anything else? The mouse trap. How the enemy will try to get you to take something, but guess what? It's a trap. It's a trap. Temptation. It may look, the mouse might see it and say, Oh, geez. So thank you, Jesus. You get this just for me? And it's a trap. All right. So those are some things. And of course, as we alluded to, the serpent and the, the fruit or the apple uh, that represents what happened in the Garden of Eve, Eden. Okay, the Garden of Eden. All right. So let's continue. Next slide. So we, we, we jotted down some things on here in our list here on the board. And you all said some things that might be temptations to, to us people is candy, food, money, sexual desire, drugs, power, going off on somebody, lying, alcohol, and more. And a lot of these things can be tied together, right? A lot of them go hand in hand. You can just take this. So well, that connects to this, this, this. I mean, you can just kind of connect the dots on there as well. So let's see what we, um, I, I grabbed some things off the internet real quick. And this one says, common temptations include eating too much. Okay, I've been there. <laughs> Spending too much. Been there. 
laziness, uh huh. Venting on social media, a lot of people have that temptation. Right? Uh, gossiping, what is gossiping? Say it again. Say it again, Pastor Mary. <laughs> Say it again. Uh, I just said spilling the tea. You, you weren't as excited as you were, were the first time. <laughs> spilling the tea. Telling, girl, you know what so-and-so did? Oh, or texting. And Back in the day, you used to be to call on the phone. Girl, guess what I heard, right? Yeah. Now it's through text, but still, it's gossiping. It's gossiping, mm-hmm. right? Uh, feeling jealous. Temptation to feel jealous. I felt the temptation to feel jealous at times. It's no longer, longer an issue now, but I felt that at times. Uh, viewing pornography can be a big temptation, not only for men, but also for women. Okay? Temptation. Okay? Lying or cheating and abusing alcohol. Lying or cheating or abusing alcohol. Well, no one's going to see me lying or cheating, right? I'm just going to do it this time and then, you know, it'll, I'll get ahead just this once. No one's watching. God is watching. And as we talked about it earlier, and we read in the book of Revelations, our actions are being recorded and written down in the book of life. All right. And so it's important that if even no one else is around, integrity says not to do it. Integrity is doing the right thing even when no one else is around. So it's important to have integrity. I remember at one point, mm-hmm, we've showed, we showed a video. We're not going to do it today, but we showed a video. If you recall it, and my wife has seen it many a times in her profession. But we watched the video, and the video was like, I think, a marshmallow experiment, and where there was a child at a table, and then pretty much the person said, look, there's two big marshmallows here. You can have this one right, right here. You can eat it now, or you can wait for about a minute or two minutes. I'm going to walk outside the room, and then when you come back, I'll give you another one. So you can have two if you just wait for a little bit. Well, some kids, most kids decided to wait. Oh, I Look, I can, just, I can get another one. Okay, yeah, I'll wait. But the temptation of seeing that marshmallow in front of them and someone like this, like looking at it and sweating and stuff, and they wanted it so bad. Some would actually pick it up, take a bite, and kind of turn it over to where you can't see the, where they've bitten on it. And some would sniff it and smell it and put it back, and some would touch it. Just, okay, no, I don't want it. But it was the temptation of knowing it was there. It was for them, but not just yet. Mm-hmm. And so eventually, a lot of the kids they did uh, overcome the temptation. The person came back in, and all this was being videotaped because it was a social experiment to see their willpower. Delayed gratification. Delayed gratification my wife was saying, "Can you delay the gratification? I can get two, but I have to delay it. And, and then once the person comes back in, I'll get two. That's just working as well, right? Can you save up the, the gratification of spending too much? Can you put away? Well, I want what I want now." But if I save up a little bit, I'll save up and I'll be able to get it later because now I would have saved more. Okay, and then I wouldn't have sacrificed bills to get what I want. Delayed gratification. So let's look at some scripture here in a second. But I want to talk about a few more things on the slide before we go to some scripture. So we're going to cover scriptures here in just a moment. But let's go back one slide. So. The only thing I want to talk about, I do want to talk about more, but the Lord said just talk about one more thing. Resist. Someone see at the bottom of the slide, it's like a little uh, graphic on there. Uh, my, my daughter said in the back, it's the graphic with the, the thumb up there. And that thumb, that, that, that fist can be for like a lot of things. There's things I think about, like fight the power, right? I think about fight the power. I think about the movement Black Panther, Black Power. I think about the movement La Raza, right, with uh, being led by the migrant workers and Cesar Chavez, right? I think about a lot of things, just the power we got to resist, right? I think about some of those things. So this, that image is applicable to so many things. Resistance, to resist. Can you resist temptation? Can we as believers resist temptation? Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants us to give in to the temptation, right? He wants us to give in to temptation like, he, like Eve did, like so many people in the Bible have, have done. They gave in to the temptation to sin. Uh, who, what, what man was it that gave in to temptation? There was a lady, and she was, uh, kept asking him, hey, dude, 
How are you so strong? Like, where does your strength lie? Tell me, tell me, where does your strength lie? How are you so strong? Because you can do this, you can do that. You took a, a, a lion, you, you beat it, you like opened his mouth and you killed it. And it was, you're so strong because the spirit of God comes upon you. How can you do it? And you, the, the locks, your locks, the hair is just so just amazing. Dude, your hair is like awesome. She was like all this stuff. And finally, he gave in to the temptation and to the, 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 her persistence. Who was that? Samson. Samson, Samson, Delilah, the persistence, the enemy can be persistent. He can come to you and say, how about you do this? Don't you want to do this? Keep on doing this. No, you should do this. And sometimes he'll give you an excuse like the the excuse sounds good. You know, you should just do this because X, Y, and Z. All right. But it's important that we resist the temptation. Because at the end of the day, the temptation, are we going to be like the Nicolaitans and the society and the heathens and those the unbelievers in this world and give in to the temptation? Well, I know the, 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 the LGBTQIA and plus community. They, my, yeah, I just leave them alone. They just, they just want to live their life. They're not doing anything wrong. And you hear this over and over again. So you, you can resist the temptation to say, you know what? I think you're right. I'm, you know, they're. They're not doing anything wrong. I'm not going to speak about them. I'm going to give in to what you're saying. Or you can continue to pray for those folks. You know what? You are doing something wrong. <laughs> According to the word of God, you're living uh, 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 opposite of what God wants you to do. If confronted, I may share that with you in love. But at the same time, my mindset, I'm not shifting over. I'm going to continue to pray and stand on what the word of God says. Well, it's a woman's choice. It's her body. She can have an abortion if she wants to. It's her body. Because what if, what if that... that so they make a good case, but resisted the, the temptation to side with society when the God's word is clear about a woman and uh, the, the, a baby, right? And about uh, it coming to term and about um, not killing our seed. They were sacrificing their, their babies to the, the God of Moloch in the Bible days, and that wasn't a good thing. God did not like that, right? And so society may, ha- may make it sound good, so we can give them to the temptation to agree with them so we won't get talked about or we can choose to stand for the word of God. It sounds like we need to resist some social norms that have been created. So Pastor Mary talks about resisting social norms, she says, that have been created in the United States. Yes. Resisting social norms in the U.S., in U.S. Things that society says it's normal, you should do it. And now the Christian, the believer, those who are loving and following after God, when we speak up and say, no, this is what the Bible says, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just, well, how come? And you, you just, you're judging people. The Bible says, I can't judge, right? I have two eyes. I shall know a fruit, a tree by its fruit. And so I'm just speaking the truth in love. And so anyway, the social norms, resisting the temptation. We're going to continue, but let me say this first. Have you ever seen the movie Matrix? And in the Matrix, uh, the Matrix is a, is a, a, a good parallel to where we're living at uh, now and the point that a lot of people are in the Matrix, going through what social norms and society has brainwashed us to believe. But when you, God opens our eyes and we wake up to the truth, we either have to keep following the Matrix or stand up and do what God's called us to do. And there was a group of people called the resistance. They, they were the resistance with Neil and they lived underground and they, they lived like they were by themselves. Right. And so they weren't plugged in. That's good. They weren't plugged into the pod and society and to the mental pit pictures and the things that were happening in the matrix. But they had unplugged from what society had said. I'm not calling us to unplug from like, like not having your social security card or anything like that. I'm not saying that tonight. What I'm saying is unplugging from the way society has uh, conditioned us to think and plug into how the word of God wants us to think. Okay. And so it's important that we resist temptation. We resist the enemy. Let's go to this first scripture. Any questions thus far before we continue? All right. This first scripture. Feel free to take notes. Um. As we're moving through, if you want to take notes, you can. I always encourage us to take notes uh, for every 
message. Uh, there's always things to the side for the most part. But as, if you choose to take notes, um, this question right here, camera back on for a second. I was talking to a co worker uh, mother yesterday, and this co worker has tuned in to our, our ministry. Uh, we were talking about church one day, and she says, she says, look, she says, I perceive that you're a pastor. Are you a minister of some, some time, some type? She says, I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She said, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it in my heart because I was given a presentation and it, it just comes out. And so she's like, I, and that's what she said. I knew it. She's a lovely lady. Uh, and so she's a believer as well. So we were talking yesterday at work. Uh, every now and then we get together at work for a meeting. That was one of those times where like 100 of us coworkers came together and we were talking. And long story short, she says that, that she's tuned in and listened to some messages. And she says, you know what? She says, you like to teach. She says, I can tell that you're a teacher. And I said, yes, I do like to teach. I like to make sure that we all get an understanding. And all I get, get an understanding because it's so important that we have a sound foundation. I can speak up here and I can go deep, but I don't want to, I want to make sure that we all can all get it so we can grow right and some things that might be up here at times but i want to make sure we speak and teach so we all understand god's word so we can apply it right so we can, because it's important that we're doing the word of god apply it to our life not just have religion religion's not there's a lot of religions but i want to have relationship i want to have relationship with the father I want to have a relationship with God and talk to him on a daily basis and read God's word and commune with him and sing to him and cry to him and pour out my heart to him and celebrate him and honor him. Relationship with the father. So in teaching, um, this question is this. What are some areas that you're tempted in? What are some areas, you don't have to tell me, but some, some things so you can be accountable. And even you don't, you can get, it's good to write them down, but just think about what are some areas where you are tempted? We want to give you some scripture today to help stand when you are tempted in various uh, devices, various areas of life, right? To be, to, to be able to stand. One thing that sometimes I might have a temptation in is to binge watch TV when I should be doing my homework. All right, binge, make it, oh, this show's good, and this show's good, and this show's good, and then here I am watching this show, but I still have to do this work. It may not be homework. For some of us, it might be housework or chores or certain work, right? Or work work if you work from home. Oh, this show's good. I was going to put my, my coworker hang on. This show's good, Right? So we can be tempted in various areas. So temptation may not just lead to sin directly, but some things that it can slow you down, right? And eventually, the, if you act on it and you keep, it can lead you in some paths that you may not want to be on. So how are you tempted? And not just to sin. There are some obvious temptations that can lead to sin, right? I'm reminded of, what was it, what was it Father? Was it Matthew 15 and 10? I don't know. Uh, we're going to read this first scripture. But there's some, there's some obvious temptations, and so we want to make sure that we're standing and doing what God called us to do and being who God has called us to be. All right, so this first one says this. This is in James, as we put it on the screen, James 1, 13 through 14. No one, is, no one undergoing a trial should say, I'm being tempted by God, since God is not tempted by evil. And he himself tempts, doesn't tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desire. So God doesn't tempt us, but we are tempted when we are drawn away of the desire or the lust that, uh, within ourselves. How many people know that your flesh is not your friend? Your flesh wants to lead you away, right? Your flesh wants to do certain things and wants to give in. But we have to master our flesh and conquer our flesh. I was talking to a, 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 a person here recently and I shared this with them, which I applied to my life. Is what you're doing feeding your spirit? It's what you do. Does it, how does it feed your spirit? How does it benefit your spirit? For example, is it music that you listen to? Is it feeding your spirit? Now, well, well Pastor David, I, I, I like to listen to a lot of music. Cool. Okay, cool. All right. But what about some music? Like back in the day, 
I listen to a lot of music that was now when I listen to it as an adult, it's, it was very sexual. But you know, when in the day it was the thing that was it was the in fad, right? And so when I when I glance back, I'm like, ooh, I can't listen to that anymore because one, it takes me back to another mindset, but two, it just offends my spirit. So is what is what you're doing? How does it feed your spirit? How, what does it do to your spirit? Whether it's watching TV on your phone, whatever it might be, how is it? helping or hindering your walk maybe it's not doing anything okay but is it drawing you away little by little by little i told you about gray's anatomy i used to watch gray's anatomy a lot i liked it i liked the storylines but then it started getting too racy like too uh lascivious and a lot of this sex and happening people sleeping with different i don't want to see that just get to the storyline tell me what's happening with with meredith right i just wanted to know but then I had to stop watching it because it was just something I couldn't watch because it, it just the Lord said, don't watch it because it's just a lot of filth for me. It's, it's, I just couldn't watch it anymore. So things like that. How's it feeding your spirit? So when each person is tempted, when he is drawn away and enticed of his own evil desire, this is the Christian standard Bible. These verses remind us that God doesn't tempt us to do evil. It says we are tempted because of our own sinful nature. This is a helpful reminder to stay on guard on guard in your battle against temptation on guard right? stay on guard in your battle against temptation no matter how long you've been a Christian you are still susceptible to being tempted yes and amen yes we are after following Jesus closely for three years Peter denied him three times during one dark night Peter was not immune to temptation and neither are Christians today y'all Peter saw Jesus. Peter walked on the water with Jesus, right? Peter knew Jesus for three years, and Jesus knew him. Peter cut off somebody's ear for Jesus. Jesus put it back on, forgave him. Peter, hold up, dude. I can call my own angels down here and take care of this. You don't have to do anything. Man. Put your sword away. Put, the, put it away, Peter. All right. uh, but it's important that if we know that Peter walked with Jesus... And then he also was tempted and, uh, to, to start cursing and, and t t try to deny Jesus. Then that can befall us as well. Right. We could be tempted uh, to walk away for, from Jesus or, or be tempted to sin or deny or Jesus in whatever way. Right? We can be tempted. So it's important that we watch against that. So don't say God tempts me. No, God doesn't tempt you. He doesn't tempt us. He may allow us to go through some things, but he does not tempt us. This is, that's what the scripture says in James. Let's go to the next um, scripture. Luke 4, 13. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from, from Jesus, from him, until an opportune time. This is when Jesus, in, in Luke uh, 4 and Matthew 4, was in the wilderness being tempted of the devil. After he fasted, after he had fasted for how many days? 40, 40 days. 40 nights he fasted and then he was tempted of a devil it says here at the beginning of Jesus' ministry he was led by the spirit into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted by the devil having resisted the, these initial temptations this verse tells us that the devil left Jesus alone until an opportune time in other words he wasn't finished tempting Jesus yet so he left Jesus for a season but he came back later on to tempt him and he showed up in a different way he showed up differently so when you overcome a temptation, know that, okay, he might leave you alone for a season, but it might come back a different way. It may not come through the same temptation. All right. So he saw an opportune time later after Jesus told his disciples that he would be crucified and resurrected in three days. This is in Matthew 16, 21. After hearing the news, Peter actually rebuked the Lord and told Jesus this wasn't going to happen. Jesus said he's going to be crucified. No, Jesus, that ain't going to happen. You can't be crucified. Jesus didn't see Peter, but he saw who truly was trying to tempt him to, to uh, uh, get him out of character. Peter actually rebuked the Lord. Or after this hearing, hearing the news, Peter rebuked the Lord and told Jesus this wasn't going to happen at the bottom of the screen. But Jesus knew what was really taking place. He knew who it was behind this advice as he responds in Matthew 6, 23, Get thee behind me, Satan. This verse reminds us that Satan 
and his demons are relentless. They keep, they keep coming back. They keep attacking. But it's important for us to take a stand, to stand in his name, to stand having our loins girded about with truth, stand in the helmet of salvation, to stand in the, for the word of God. Because that's where the power comes by in his word, by standing firm in the word. So knowing that if the Satan tempted Jesus and when they came back and tempted him again, some time later, we'll go through temptations. It's all right. But God is, God is for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? Let's go to the next scripture as we are learning to stand and resist temptation. Hebrews 4, 15. For we did not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus has gone through some of the same temptations, been tempted in some of the same root temptations that we have been tempted in, but yet he's without sin. He didn't give in to those temptations. He didn't give in to go drink with his buddies all night after, you know, he turned water into wine. He didn't give, give in to keep drinking, you know, at the, at the, okay, y'all, I'm just going to digress for a second. Y'all, Jesus made the wine. Y'all know it was good, right? But he didn't give in to that temptation, right? He, he, not saying drinking wine is not a sin, but drinking wine in excess. Hey, how you doing, sir? Drinking wine in excess. That's where the sin is, right? What you do in excess, that's a sin. And so he was tempted uh, but in every way, yet without sin. Amen. It says the good news is that Jesus never, someone say never. Yeah. Jesus never gave in to temptation. And we can have that example as well. Because he never sinned, Satan was defeated. What an encouragement to be reminded of this glorious truth. As we will see that at the end of this post, Jesus' victory over temptation changes everything about our personal struggles. How many people have ever per struggled with something personal? Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes, many times I hear it. Yes, yeah, going through some struggles, right? Some of us are going through struggles now or in the process of overcoming struggles or just came out of a struggle, right? And so God is with us. He says that we don't, ha we ha don't, ha we don't have a high priest who's never been through some of the weaknesses, but he was, he was tempted but never sinned. So we know if Jesus went through some temptations, he overcame by the word, we can overcome as well. He's given us authority. So this is good news. Let's continue. We're talking about resisting temptation. That's what we're talking about tonight, resisting temptation. Matthew 6, 13. It says, and do not bring us in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Trivia, trivia question. Where is this passage this scripture is taken out of a bigger context of something. And we call it a model prayer, or we call it what? The Lord's Prayer. Thank you, I kind of took you thunder. Sorry about that. The Lord's Prayer. So yes, it says, and lead us not into, into temptation, but what? Deliver us from all that is evil. Don't bring us into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from the evil one. Now the enemy's real. Darkness is will, but the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against uh, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. I will say this, there are things in the sky that we do not see that are evil. And the principalities and things, of course, it's God's creation is beautiful, but the Bible speaks as powers and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, right? And so, but they can't touch us because we belong to God. We are protected by his, his, the angels and his covering. That's why, again, it's so important to walk with the king. Because when you walk away from his covering, oh, sister, oh, buddy, you open yourself up to so many different things. I remember as we go to, um, yeah, we'll keep it here for a second. Deliver us. In my stubborn days, in my theatrical days, I would say it's not yeah in my in my stubborn days there was a time that I was giving into my flesh and I was just doing something because I wanted to do it David wanted to do it and God was telling you stop doing it okay God but I'll stop doing it but let me just finish this because I'm in, in a book stop doing it okay God I'm gonna stop I'm really trying but okay oop and then I was tempted again I gave into the temptation guess what happened the Lord said I I done told you to stop right yes sir 
Okay, then uh, guess what? He withdrew from me just for, for a second. And guess what happened? I told the story before that I got into a car accident in Kyle, Texas. I was, at a, I was at a stoplight and somebody came and hit me from the back and launched me into a ditch and threw me around. And I was shaking up and my wife called my wife and she came to get me. I think we ended up going to the hospital later for like just to, as a precaution because I was kind of sore afterwards. During the moment I was good, but after like 30 or 40 minutes, I was like, ooh, babe, uh, we need to go to the hospital. But because I kept giving into temptation and sinning and being disobedient to God, he said, all right, I'm lifting my hands off you just for a moment. And at a moment, the enemy who had been trying to kill me all along had a chance to just breathe on me for a second. All right. And I got into accident. There's an evil one out there. But as we walk with the king, we're protected under his, under his shadow. The Bible says in Psalms 91, he who dwells. And the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty God. So, so important in these last days that we walk with the king and resist the temptations that try, is trying to pull us back to the dark side. I won't go. I'm not going. Be like that dog that we saw in the picture and that we see here in position. I ain't going. Drop your weight. Drop your position. Drop your body and humble yourself before the Lord and look up to the king and say, Father, help me. Help me. I need your help. I need your guidance. Help me to resist this, this temptation, whatever it might be. All right. Take this taste out of my mouth or whatever it might be. So, next slide. By the way, if it's a little warm in here, it's because it was like hot, 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 like fish grease outside today. It's like 109. Um, so we came in here earlier to turn the AC on, but it's still a little, it was hot, hot. So Matthew 26 and 41. And just, just in case, you know, this is one reminder for us to live a life for the Lord because hell is hotter than this, right? And so it's important that we live it, uh, our life here so we can spend the eternity with the Father in heaven because we're going to live it forever anyway. But it's where our home is going to be at the end of the day, is yeah. we have a choice now to choose. The Bible says Matthew 26, 41. Watch, I love this. It says, watch and pray that you may not enter, tempta enter temptation. For the spirit is willing, but what? The flesh is weak. We just talked about the flesh earlier. The flesh is in partnership with the, with the enemy. Pastor Mary, where is this? What was Jesus talking about when, when he was talking about this verse? Um, he was at uh, Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Gethsemane? Gethsemane. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, he was going to pray before he was going to be crucified. Yeah. So he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was going through something and he was almost like what we shared earlier. Hey, I have a prayer request. I need you to stand with me and pray with me. Right. He took his three compadres, right? He took his Peter, James and John with them just kind of for support. Hey, y'all come pray with me. Y'all pray here. I'm going to go further so I can pray by myself because I'm going through. I, I, I don't want to do this. I, he's like, I, I don't want he doesn't want to be crucified. But at the end of this, this time, he said, not what I will. Nevertheless, not what I want, but God, what you want. But he told the, the disciples, watch and pray that you may not enter, temptation, enter into temptation. What was the temptation for the disciples in this point? Yes, ma'am. Sleep. Yeah. Sleep. Yes. Sleep was the, the, tempt, the temptation for them. Uh, family, we, we've driven some miles this summer. We've driven some miles. I would say we've driven close to 4,000 to 5,000 miles this summer. And so thank God for his protection. During some of those points, not because of the prayers of the righteous and because of God, but during a couple of times, there was times when I was driving and sleep said, hey, what's up? What you doing? I'm like, no, I'm driving. Leave me alone. <laughs> and so the sleep was like right here and I had to shake myself. Right? I was, I'm good. Get off me. Stop it. <laughs> I didn't want to give in to, in to the temptation because had I had given in, Sister Bonnie, it would not have been good for my family. Right? Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. Your friend got into an accident because they fell asleep while driving, and that's not a good thing, not a good thing at all. And so 
their, tempt their temptation in this moment was sleep because it was early. It had, they had just finished eating. They had the, like the Lord's Supper. And they went out, right? And this is when Judas is going to go tell the, the, the high priest where Jesus is at. And so it's late and they're praying. And so they're trying to stay up. He said, y'all pray with me. Yeah, Jesus. And he says it here. I know you want to. Your spirit's willing, but your flesh, it's weak. He said, I know you want to, but your flesh is weak. How many people want to live for the Lord? But sometimes your flesh doesn't want you to. But our spirit man should be having power over our flesh and not the other way around. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, we see the need to pray in order to avoid temptation. So talk to the Lord to avoid temptation. Temptation as you're going through and if you feel tempted. Father, I need help. Lord, help me through this. Lord, I want to go off on somebody. Help me, Father. Lord, I want to I wanna, uh, watch this, but help me, Father. Help me not to look at this right now because I know I need to get this done. Some of us is, Lord, I want to look at this website on social media and there's things I shouldn't be looking at, but no, that's not for my eyes. I want to make a covenant with my eyes so I don't, I don't look at that stuff. Right? So again, we see the need to pray in order to avoid temptation, but Jesus also tells them to watch. In other words, they need to be an on guard. They need to be on guard against the temptation. They need to watch out for it. As Peter would later write, they needed to be sober-minded, sober-minded and watchful because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. 1 Peter 5 and 8. So it's important that we stand. Let's go ahead and close out. What, timekeeper, how, how are we? Cool, we're closing out. Virginia, Sister Virginia, good to see you. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says this. No temptation has come upon you except what is common to man or humanity. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. But with temptation, he will also provide a way out so that you may be able to bear it. A way of escape. So if you, I've told people this before. If you're going through temptation, ask God, where's the door? Show me the door. Where's the way out? Like, if, especially my back's against the wall. I feel like I need to do this. Father, where's the door? Because I don't want to do this. Because I know where it's going to take me. I know it might get me out of line. I know this will get me off, off track. Or I might be having to uh, do this for my family. And if I keep doing this, I won't get it done. Right? It says, you may feel at times that you have no choice but to give in to temptation. But Paul declares in this verse that not, not, that's not the case. God is faithful. He will always provide a way of escape during temptation. God will always find a, follow, uh, make a way of escape during temptation. If you can put that on the screen for those at home really quickly so they can see that as well. So he'll provide a way of escape. No temptation has come upon you. So the Bible says it this way in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There is nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun, right? Everything that, that, that you think could happen new, it's already happened. There's nothing new under the sun. Well, we have a new invention, but okay, that's what y'all say. But okay, I'm just going to keep it there because I don't want to open that can of worms just yet. There's nothing new under the sun. So when you're going through temptation, ask God to help. Where's the door? Watch and pray. In that last scripture before, it says watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The screen before, right? And so it says, make sure that you're watching and praying. That you may not enter temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So watch and pray. Ask God for help. Next slide. He won't make a temptation that you can't escape from. So it's up to you. Are you going to stay in the temptation? Or are you going to look for the door and escape? Are you going to call out for help? Yes. Sometimes what happens is you're not prayed up. You're not in the word long enough. You haven't spent time with God. And you blindly go into a situation that causes that temptation that you if you would have prayed if you would have been in God's word you would have avoided it because you would have taken a different path yeah, yeah. Pastor Mary says sometimes we're just not prayed up so maybe the Lord was trying to speak to us earlier and we just weren't listening but had we had been praying and listening we wouldn't have even gone through the, through the temptation right our eyes would have been open Speaking, yeah, speaking from experience. 
All right, let's continue the, this one more scripture. Is it one more? Yeah. My little children, I'm writing to you these things so that you may not sin. How many people know that sin is not your friend? Amen. Sin is not your friend. It's not my friend. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But if we still have sin on us, when it's time to check out, sin is going to take us to where sin takes us. And that's Romans, uh, Romans chapter 6 and 23. The payment for sin is death. My little children, I'm writing to you these things so that you might not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. So if we do fall into temptation and, and we do fall prey to sin and we are tempted, get back up again and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me. Please forgive me. And we have an advocate. Right. We have an advocate who, who's the father who can forgive us, the righteous one. It says here, Jesus was perfect. Actually, let's go to the next slide, please, if you don't mind. This is bigger, so I want to make it bigger. Jesus was, uh, was perfect. We are not. Jesus never sinned. We do. Jesus never gave in to temptation. We can't say the same for ourselves. The reality is that in our battle with temptation, we don't have a perfect track record. But we know someone who does. His name is Jesus. Whenever you give in to temptation, Satan would love for you to forget the glorious truth, this glorious truth. He would love for you to for you to sin and then to be further fall into despair as you mentally beat yourself up over your continued imperfections. He wants to convince you that you are beyond God's mercy and grace. He wants you to stay in the sin and wallow in the sin and be lost in sin. But we have found God's grace and forgiveness. But if we have to access it right and walk in it. Amen. So is, is anything else? I think that's it. That's it. All right. So those are the scriptures there. First, John two, one through two. Um, go back again really quickly. Um, again, first Corinthians 10, 13. Next slide. Matthew 26, 41. Matthew 6, 13. Hebrews 4, 15 and Luke 4, 13. And one more. James chapter one, verse uh, verse number 13. So, again, we'll put this in the chat if we can. If you want to access it later, you can. Um, but those are the scriptures we have so we can stand on the word. This is strength. This can encourage us to stand on the word. That's how Jesus defeated Satan in uh, Luke chapter four. Right. He says, um, and when the devil ended every temptation, he departed from him for an opportunity, another time. But Jesus defeated Satan through the word. He stood on the word and fought with the word. So. Resist the devil and he will flee. Rise up and be the resistance for, from sin. Right? Don't disagree with what society is saying to do, but walk according to the word of God. Walk, speak the truth and love and live for him. Get to know him through his word. We're living in the last days and last times and it's easy to fall into sin through temptation, but we have to have our mind made up that I'm going all the way. I'm going to go hard. I'm going to do hard, go hard for Christ this time, right? And so we can't go back. I, I've said before, look, I can't, I have, I cannot disqualify myself. I'm going to share this with you. Tomorrow, I'm speaking at an event. I'm speaking at a very prestigious event. It's a very selective event. They don't invite everybody to speak. Everybody just can't come to this event either. It's kind of selective. And so anyway, I'm speaking at this event about fatherhood. And so it's not of my own goodness that I was selected to be at this event. They actually emailed me and asked me, can you come speak here? It's the goodness of God. That's a God thing. I'm not getting it twisted. Oh, because I know it's the gifting of God that's on my life. I mean, I gave God the credit and glory. I can mess it up and go on there and do my own thing. Or I can seek God. I can ask God to speak through me. I have my, so I have my notes already done. I've already sent them what I'm going to say, so I'm going to follow the slide, but I'm also going to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and say it how he wants me to say it. So I can mess things up. I could be tempted to do that, but if that would, tomorrow, with, within one hour, I have the opportunity to tear down everything that God has built in my family and my job. I can go out there and act a plum fool and get fired, or I can go out there and stand and be who God's called me to be, and that's what I'm going to do. 
I use that analogy to say this. We, are, we have temptations and we can either disqualify ourselves and succumb to the tempt- temptation that the enemy throws at us or we can choose to stand and fight if the word of God says, mm, in the name of Jesus, I come against that. Mm-mm. I come against that thought in the name of Jesus. Yes. I come against, no, I'm not, I'm not going to entertain that in the name of Jesus. Mm-mm. Oh, no, it's in my head. Okay, let me put a song on. Let me get a song for the Lord. Father, and let me just indoctrinate myself with, with this word. Let me get some scripture, put on my headphones. Let me just listen to the word. What works for you to keep you fighting? Because who are you surrounding yourself around? Right, and thank you for keeping your word and showing up. Thank you for saying, for being here. This is how we fight our battles by surrounding yourself with people who mean good for you, and by coming to hear the word of God. May not understand everything that's being said, but if you can just get one nugget and stand on that one piece, that one nugget, you know, this Lord, I know you're for me. If you be for me, who can be against me? Sometimes my flesh is weak, but my spirit is willing. I want to live for the Lord, so I'm going to keep feeding my spirit and starving my flesh. So the things we listen to at home, the things we watch, the things that we, we put in our body, is it feeding our spirit or is, is it hindering our spirit? Is it feeding our spirit or is it feeding our flesh? Who's going to be stronger? Who's going to win inside of you? The Lord or your flesh? Sure. So early on, um, early on, and we probably need to do this again, but we used to have scriptures all throughout the house. We would have stuff just written. We would just type it up and we would um, just put tape on it and stick it up on different places, put it on the mirror. So when I looked at myself, I would see it, put it on the refrigerator, put it on the counter, just put it wherever you could see it so that you're ingesting the word everywhere you go. Thank you. So again, surrounding yourself with the word of God. That's what we should be doing, surrounding ourselves with the word. Yes, sir. Um, what you were saying, that I want to do that because um, it would help me a lot with looking in the mirror because I do have trouble looking at myself in the mirror yeah. just due to my past and um, low self-esteem issues that I have. Yeah. But I know that through the power of Christ and God that Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for admitting that, because that shows power and strength right there, right. and that you, that you're wanting to, that you're needing help and wanting to be strong. So God's word can do that, man, and just putting the word of God. And so uh, we can help you with some scriptures as well, and just finding something, you know, even handwritten and construction paper. Yeah. And so we just putting some things up, and so we'll we'll work on getting that for you, so you can read, see the word of God, and then look at you. I am what God's called me to be. I'm the apple of God's eye. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. These are scriptures. I can do all things through Christ because He gives me strength. I'm the head. I'm no longer the tail. Right. And so we can say what God says about us. And until we believe it right now, when you first say you may not believe it, but it's God's word. So it's the truth. But then you say it till you believe it until you begin to walk in it. Right. And so these are uh, what's called either confessions or acclamations affirmations thank you. Good things to say about yourself. Affirmations affirming who God has called you to be and who you are. And the most powerful words that you ever like really listen to and take in are words that you speak to yourself. People can say things and, and we might in- internalize it, but we don't start believing those things until we start saying those things to ourselves. And that's and, my issue. I yes, you it's need to start speaking, to speaking the word of God about who God says you are. Mm-hmm. Not what anybody else says you are. But what, how God sees you and how God wants you to become the young man in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes, so keep on um, coming. Keep on fighting. Keep on believing because God has destined you for greatness. Amen. God has called you to be great. God has called you to be great. God has called you to be great. You have an awesome legacy. God has called you all to be great and continue to walk in him. What we'll do on Sunday is maybe before we'll work on getting some affirmations. Um, for everybody, uh, just some things that were print out, but also some things specifically for you as well, sir. Uh, so we'll, we'll work on that. Amen. Um, all right. Any questions? Any thoughts? Any last concerns? Any other comments? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Um, what would uh, be a starter that I could write for um, in the morning for tomorrow? 
tomorrow before I go to work in the mirror? What should I write on a sticky note? Yeah. Could you help me with something I could put down? So. Yes. Yes, so see me after, uh, after church here, I mean, after we get, get done. There's a few that's coming to mind. I want to see, uh, make sure that's something that resonates with you as well. Because as you were saying, I, I heard like there's several that could be good. So, but I want to make sure that it's something that it's like, yeah, that's what I need. So that way you can, s- can start speaking that tonight when you go to sleep and then wake up. And this is who God's called me to be. This is not what, just, what I think about myself. Because sometimes we have these, these negative thoughts. Yeah. And we beat up on ourselves because of the of our failures. And so I, how come and why come? And, and we can't let the enemy take us there because God has made you a new creation. And so now it's coming out of the old you has passed away. The new you has been made through Christ. Right. And so learning what God says about you, not what the world says. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll share some things with you in a second. Amen. You're welcome. Praise God. Amen. Well, we're going to close out and pray. And amen. We're going to pray and just uh, thank God for um, for all of you coming and let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you, God, for the word. Thank you, God, for letting us come to be be together as a body of believers, to be strong together, God, to hear your word and to be able to see one another and say, you know what, this sister and this brother is going through that and this brother and, you know, we're all going through our own struggles and all going through our own victories. But, God, we can come here and say that we are one body seeking your face, God, seeking you to do the right thing, Father God. And when we fall down or falter, we get right back up again and repent, dust ourselves off and keep going, Father. God, the word that was spoken tonight was about resist temptation, Father, and we thank you for the scriptures that was giving. We thank you for your word, Father God. Help us to hide it in our heart that we want to sin against thee, Father. Help us be doers of your word, God. We understand that we will go through temptation, through temptation, Father God, but we can be victorious because of Jesus Christ, Father. So we thank you, God, God, that you always provide a way of escape. We thank you, God, for giving us the authority and the power and the victory through your son, Jesus Christ. God, as we leave this place, but never your presence, bring us back at the next appointed time, which for many of us is this coming Sunday at 930, Father God, and 10 o'clock word. We thank you, God, for being with us throughout the week. Help us be victorious in all that we do. The things that we pray tonight, God, Mother Adela's brother, God, Sister Soraya, Father God, and many other things we talked about this, this evening. God, we thank you for doing it. We thank you that they are the healed of the Lord. We thank you for us getting sweet sleep and our focus and our prayer, praise is, is on you. In Jesus' name we pray. We praise you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Consider yourself dismissed. Amen. Yeah.